So I don't know about you, but when I go to open that third bottle of wine at, naked in the house at 10.30 a.m. on a Tuesday, operating a manual course crew can be uh, too much work. Uh, fortunately, I have this lovely rabbit uh, um, wine opener here from uh, several years ago uh, made by uh, Metro Cane uh, that our neighbors gave us because they're very thoughtful uh, people. And it's worked great, opened many bottles. The problem is the, uh, the battery now doesn't put out enough current to actually um, uh, deliver the necessary thrust for, the, for as long as it needs to. So you kind of have to plug it in and keep squeezing it and it's really kind of done. So the battery needs to be replaced in here. Now I've never opened one of these uh, and so I looked around on the web and uh, no one seemed to have done a video on it either. And so I lashed my crappy old iPhone 6 up to this uh, tripod with uh, painter's tape and we're going to take a shot at this. Now I've, I haven't opened this up. I, have, I can't find out what kind of batteries inside it. I don't know what we're going to find. But uh, we'll just go ahead and, and take a whack at it. I'm hoping it's a 16850 or, or a NICAD pack or something that uh, I can order and, and probably have to solder in here. But let's see. So if you look at this thing, of course, on the top is the foil cutter. But we'll go ahead and leave that on because that leaves a nice flat um, uh, base to stand it on. And then if I turn it up here, uh, way down in this slot here between the corkscrew and the thing are, are four Phillips screwdrivers. If they're really deep. And I think getting them out is not going to be as difficult as putting them back in. But anyway, we'll take, go ahead and take a screwdriver and we'll jam it in here. And we'll see if we can, I can just barely reach it with this one. This one's the right size. The bigger screwdriver is longer, but it doesn't fit the head. Okay, so that's, that's coming out right out. That's one. And let's do another one. That's two. Come on, you. He's kind of, he's loose in there, but he doesn't want to fall out. There we go. There's three. And finally, the last one here. Let's see. And already the end's starting to wiggle around, so I, this is not going to be as difficult to get into as I feared. But we'll see how much of it actually comes apart now. Okay, so, let's see if we can get this. screw out and so what do we have here now we have the corkscrew we have a big old spring that's pushing down to keep pressure on this uh, this inner flange we'll put that in there like that and we'll lift out the the spring and let's see it was just for my own documentation it looks like looks like it's about the same diameter all the way across maybe this ends just a little bigger and that goes into the into the body of the thing Okay, well, now that's off. The question is, how do we go further? I don't see any more screws in there, so I think we will try some brute force prying here a little bit with a flat blade uh, screwdriver and see how, what happens. And I see that wants to come apart. Should get a plastic splooger and do this. Properly. Let me just kind of, yeah, something's still holding it together. Is there any place a screw could be hiding? Maybe. Oh, well, yeah, let's take that off. That'd be a good idea. Oh, this is a model 64771. Uh, power source, 6 volt DC, uh, 80 milliamps. So, um... Electric wire opener. So that means it's probably not uh, uh, a 16850 battery, unfortunately, because I have those around the house. Um, well, I'll edit this out if, uh, <laughs> if it's going to take me hours to open this thing up here. Yeah, it's just like something's holding it. I wonder if there's any. Of course, if I was smart, I would have discharged this thing before I started working on it, but you know, what's the fun in that? And, An enigma wrapped in a mystery. Just kind of feels like there's another. That it's not a snappy, plastic snappy thing. That it's a. Oh well, you know. 
there's this whole label on top. Which I don't care about too much because it's hidden by the foil cu cutter uh, cap in regular usage, but there could be. Yeah, there's definitely... There's definitely a screw. Some screws under here. I don't know that it to fall out. Maybe we come out the top then. Okay, so let me get um, a single-sided razor blade and we'll um, go ahead and um, uh, cut into that a little bit. I could just jam the screwdriver through it, but I, I won't do that. So I feel like right here. Yeah, yeah. Stay calm. And also right here. And then, of course, this is just a label, so I'm going to try to just kind of slit down the... edge on both sides. They obviously <laughs> intended this thing to just be thrown away, which is unfortunate. See what we get anything. Aha. So I just went right kind of right through the paper after slicing up. Yep, things are a little bit. Okay, so there's there's a little uh, flathead uh, metal screw. And or a uh, flathead kind of wood screw, I guess. Pointy tip. And then there's another thing right here. So I'm kind of just trying to drive through the paper here. And that can let's get a little slice there. Could be neater, but you know. There we go. All right, you can do a neater job because you'll know what you're doing. Maybe. And then the question is, are there any on this? I don't feel any on this side. So does that make any difference at all? That's the question. Boy. Hmm. This is kind of... I want to let go. There we go. There we go. Da, 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 da. And what do we have? So there you can see the uh, the drive motor, uh, another uh, tensioning spring, and this little fella right here, which looks like a, um, a NICAD um, pack. But let me put on my, my big magnifier here and turn the light on and see what I can can read. Yeah, it's a 3.6 volt uh, nickel metal hydrate uh, AA600. So um, you can get these on um, Amazon or eBay for about eight bucks. And I actually have one coming for uh, an emergency light I'm uh, repairing. Um, and you can get them with like, you know, plain leads here. So, and then the question is, they just stuck it here. There's, there's, there's sticky tape back here. So the question is, did I really have to take the screw out to get it apart, and yes, the answer is yes because um, that was holding the uh, this chassis to the to the frame, so it was good to yank that. All right, so so I ought to just be able to pry this up because it's just sticky tape. Err. Oops. You stay together, why don't you? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's all right. We got it on video. I know how it goes back together. All right. Err. Come on, you. Yeah, maybe I should hit it with the heat gun to loosen it up, but... Oh, it's got a little... Uh, it's got this darn yellow tape, which I shouldn't see. Well, the light here isn't too good, which is, you know, kind of wonders why I make a video with crummy light, but oh well. 
All right, so there we go. Okay, well, geez, that's not even a pack. Usually, these packs are um, are wrapped in a uh, uh, plastic, but this is just like <laughs> three lousy batteries um, uh, gang together. Uh, and I guess we can just go ahead and move that out of the way. And, um, and you can kind of see how it goes from one to the other. So if you get a, a pre-done pack, then I don't, I think the wiring will be, uh, simpler. Mechanically, it should fit. They may have loosened it up just to bend it around the, um, around the, uh, the, the body of the, of the motor here. Um, hmm. Yeah, so up, down, up, down. And then again, let me get my, my, my visor on here so I can really kind of see what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay, so this, this goes off to the switch. And I'm just going to leave that so I don't have to disassemble it. I will uh, take this off of here. These, um, these tabbed batteries are generally spot welded in. And I don't quite know how they do it. It's not soldered, so it's not something I can like heat up and, and get off of there. So, uh, But obviously red positive, black negative. And um, so what I'll do is take a... Um, uh, needle nose pliers and just pry these right off the top of a battery like opening a, a tin can or one of those old an old beer can with uh, um, um, a pull tab that tells you how old I am. Anyway, hang on a second. Okay, so we got our little tiny needle nose pliers. These are actually, uh, they're in like old Jameco electronics kits, but they're also used for jewelry so you can sometimes him for that. My wife likes to keep one in the kitchen to take the bones out of fish, and so that always makes it a difficult to find out what it actually is. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna grab this tab and get in there and just kind of give it a tweak. Okay, and then we'll grab this tab same way and 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 kind of just twist it off like opening a sardine can. Okay, so there's the batteries out of there. So we'll, I'll go order another battery pack and uh, I will resume this video when we when we get that. And I'll just... Okay, it's a couple of days later and I've moved to the back where the tools are and um, it's raining and the battery came. And I've had a chance to kind of take a look through this thing a little more closely and I think maybe we should um, take a quick little tour before we get into uh, uh, trying to get a battery onto this thing. So um, I realized, which I should have realized uh, when I took it apart, uh, that this uh, part of the mechanism here, this here, is part of the auto stop um, uh, machinery so that when the um, cork is pulled out and this thing goes down this pushes up and let's take this out and I don't want to disconnect the the wires here but I don't have good monitoring because these are just old iPhone 6s shooting this thing we'll get these uh, this spring and this pusher out of the way but if you if you look down in the bottom there let me stand up maybe I can see this a little better here if we don't lose the the light this this here is a switch that so uh, that plastic uh, piece on the spring pushes into this and stops the motor when the um, when the cork is uh, the cork is all the way up so this kind of goes down in there and then and then moves up when the um, the whole flange that goes around the bottle uh, moves up as well uh, other than that uh, not a lot of magic in here. This is where the uh, power goes in. This is a uh, board with a uh, reverse protection diode on it, it looks like, and then a uh, current limiting uh, resistor. Then all that stuff goes uh, underneath this panel, which is behind the switches, which has whatever charging circuitry they have, and I don't know whether it's timer, current-based, or both, or what. Um, 
and uh, and then uh, and I didn't take that apart to look at it and then it comes up here and powers the motor so it's pretty pretty simple so this is what I ordered from Amazon and uh, so we get into this thing here and this is about eight nine bucks I'll I'll link to it if I can uh, there you go so there you go three AA uh, uh, nickel metal hydride cells I know I called them NICADs earlier in the thing and I know that's old technology and I know they've been replaced by uh, 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 nickel metal hydride batteries but um, I'm old enough that uh, um, the world kind of divides itself into the old days where everything was uh, some variation of nickel cadmium technology and, and, and today when everything is um, uh, lithium. This is 800 milliamp hours. The original was 600. Um, I don't think that makes a difference. I'm hoping the charging circuit will be able to charge it all the way up. But that'll give you more um, openings uh, per charge. Uh, or it'll let you grind longer through that uh, cheap, dry, uh, powdery cork you're destroying on that cheap Trader Joe's plonk you're, you're drinking. Uh, so my strategy here is this is here. So you remember the old batteries were loose and they were trying to uh, bend around uh, this motor because they have to to fit. And if I just lay that on there uh, flat, it won't uh, it won't close. So we need to kind of relieve relieve this straight line. And you can see the. Um, uh, connection there. So what I'm going to do is try to slice this down with a um, with the razor blade and uh, bend it slightly. And then I think instead of trying to use glue or the yellow tape they have, um, I'll go ahead and just throw a cable tie around it, which I think will um, uh, work well here. So so let's give this a try. If it, if it takes a long time, I'll. I'll speed it up with the magic of video here, but let's let's see what we can can do. Should get my my magnifier here so I don't mess. Okay, let's see. So we can just kind of, and that's probably a, a, we saw before there was like a connection coming from top to bottom in these packs, so we don't want to cut through that. So we don't want to go too deep here. Now see, I got to do the top, but maybe it's going to be easier just to take the, all this wrapping off entirely. I don't know. Let's see. Apply some brute force here. <sighs> Man. I figure this is going to be the hardest part of today's activities. This is really... Um, A strong material. I'm afraid it's just going to be easier to take the whole thing off. Let's see what I got. My little pocket knife here. Let's just okay. He's gonna. Oh, yeah. So there's some hot glue holding the. Uh, the wires in which is nice uh construction oh baby this is going to be uh, it's going to be more work than i thought unfortunately um blah, 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 blah. boy that's too bad i thought this would be it really also feels like they glued these together let's see what can i see yeah they they run the I ran hot glue down here. I wonder if I take a heat gun, if I can, because um, that does look like, it does look like just like hot glue. I wonder if I could soften that. Let's, let me get a heat gun, see what, uh, see what we can do. I 
and I'm not pushing down. I don't want to heat these up too much either. Now, if I break that metal strap on the end, we'll just solder a wire on it, but it is moving. I'm getting, you can see I'm getting a little bit of, a little bit of curve there. Of course, now, <laughs> now I realize I'm bending it the wrong way because, because this has a, a wire in it. So we don't want to curve that way because the wire will stop us from bending. So really we want to kind of go the other way. So let's change course here. Oh, yeah, that melted it. It is hot glue. Hey, we're getting it. I think that's going to come off on that side. That, gee, that's not bad. Yeah, I don't want this one to... I'm happy with this outside one. That's pretty good. Just kind of, that's, that's a little unhappy here. Anyway, but let's see, let's see what we got as far as our curvature is concerned here. Uh, man, you know, I can, I think I can live with that. I think we're okay. So, yay. Looks like I didn't break any of these uh, connections off, and this is still a pretty firm unit. So that's a little janky, jankier than I would like it to be. Um, obviously, we're all kind of plastic around here, but let me go get some. I'll put a little uh, electrical tape on the um, on the bottom here, even though this is plastic. Um, I don't like this metal housing being so close and uh, I may I'll put some on the top too. All right, so there is our our curvy pack and um, let me go to the big the big jar of uh, cable ties here. Pick some and it looks like it'll work. Run this around the bottom, try to keep it out of the way of the wires. That's upside down. There we go. Start this thing. I think that's okay. That's setting, sitting in its channel okay. So I think we're all right there. Now we'll just lay this on here and I think there's a lot of work to go through for a glass of wine or a bottle of wine or two bottles of wine who am I kidding three bottles of wine uh, all right now this is slid down out of the way so let's get it slid back up all right now we're just gonna get that kind of over that tape that was in there and I think there's enough room for the Junction over here. I think that'll work well. So there's our replacement uh, battery pack. The red has to go over here, and the black has to go over here. Um, and that's just straightforward soldering. So I will do that, and but I will speed it up really fast so because it's kind of boring
hunk of shrink wrap tubing on here before I start. This is uh, 0 0.025 uh, solder, so it's fairly small. And this is a, a chisel point tip, a couple of millimeters at uh, 700 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what, uh, 370 degrees centigrade. Okay, and we're all pretty, so here we go. Okay, let's push the button. Needs a charge. I should have checked to see if it could take, <laughs> if it would charge <laughs> before I put this together, but you know, it either works or, or I guess we, we throw it out here. Is that going to stay down? All right. Okay, so now we're going to try to put this thing back together here. Um, uh, we have this uh, plastic flange that goes into the cutoff switch, so when the cork goes up, it pushes up and pulls, pushes those contacts in the bottom apart and stops the motor so that you can reverse it and uh, kick the cork out hopefully unless it jams in there and then you're sad so get that there uh, and this has a little flange around it to receive this spring so we can slide that in there so that's all centered and then this goes compresses a fair amount and sits like right in there like that so now if I have it going and this goes up well, let's see if I can do this. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, I just I just noticed something about this. The uh, cutoff switch only works when the motor's going in the forward direction. So the controller is a little more uh, sophisticated than I uh, originally suspected, which is which is interesting. So if this is going forward. And pulling the the cork out when the cork goes when this gets pushed up that stops the motor but if you're reversing then the switch doesn't do a darn thing so and that makes sense but i just never thought about it before okay so that's all set kind of gonna tuck our wires in push that down a little bit push that down a little bit looking good i think we're ready to try to close this up there are these two snappy things here so let's see if we get lucky and uh and if we've got enough curvature on our battery and whatnot now that's kind of sticking up more than i would like let me push that down okay And the uh, the little circuit board at the charge point has to fit into a little slot there too. Oh wait, I put the <laughs> I put the screws in the plastic case for safekeeping. I gotta. Okay, I think I've got all the screws out of the body now, <laughs> which I I screwed them into the body for safekeeping, and they were getting in the way. And uh, so this is down, this is good, and we'll just kind of lay this on here. Well, unfortunately, I think that this is turning out to be too big to fit in the case. So we're going to have to use a different one. So what I do, I think, what I think I'll try is take two of these and uh, to make one long enough these are these are much smaller and they have a smaller um lock point i get that no it's upside down okay
Yay. Okay, so that finally snapped together and is buzzing okay. And so now we just have to put the screws in. I think if I had to do this again, I might try using the heat gun on this label to see if I could take it off in one piece. Uh, as I say, not that it matters too much because the uh, foil cutter will, will cover this, but it'd kind of be nice. I kind of messed that up. So anyway, um, uh, so let's, uh, we'll go into hyper mode here and uh, put some screws in. Okay, those were the flat heads that went in the top. We can even get a little, little schmutz there from the, well, let's see, <laughs> that label's kind of not so good anymore, but don't use the foil cutter anyway, because, you know, it promptly went dull uh, uh, pretty quickly. Okay, I was just looking at this, trying to make sure I'm going to put it together right, and I'm not quite sure what pushes back the um, the, the disconnect um, switch there, but let's try to get it together and see what I mess up. So I'll put the big, big screw in first. Uh, this tapered end looks like it belongs on a on a spring, and then this has a this has a groove where these uh, tracks go. So let's see if we can get that on there. So something like that, and then this has it only goes into one way too. So let's spin it till we till it falls in. All right, so that's that. That's that's going up and down. I don't know. If that'll actually work, but now we got to get those lousy, um, those lousy short screws in. Let me, I'm going to just take some scotch tape temporarily to hold this. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of, um, spring pressure on this, but if I don't have something to hold it in place, it'll come off and I don't want to be exerting force to keep that down. So that's just that's just for the moment here. Let me uh, put some on this side too. Kind of you know, just uh, fold the end so we can get it off easily. And I'll just kind of keep that together while we goof with this thing. Uh, da, da, da. I'm actually kind of looking at this, and I don't know if you can see. There's a there's this dimple here. So now I'm thinking I can slide the screw down the dimple into position. So that's what I'm going to try to do. We'll see how this goes. So we'll just lay the Lay the screw on there. I get it. Yes. Okay, we have a technique. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. It is back together. Um, I'm not quite sure if the cutoff switch is going to work because I don't see what pushes it. I'm kind of wondering if how the cork uh, does that. Uh, so I guess the uh, uh, best way to check it is to um, open some wine and have a drink. Well deserved after fighting this thing. Yeah. This was a lot harder than I expected it to be, uh, especially the battery pack stuff. I would probably um, be careful bending those metal flanges on the battery. It's probably better to uh, cut them and solder some wire on. Uh, if you do, don't heat the battery too much and use some flux. Um, but I got lucky. Um, I don't know. It, it's a fairly it's a fairly tight fit. Um, uh, yeah, so getting into it now that I've done it, it probably is not so bad, but, uh, um, fashioning a proper battery pack to go in here is <laughs> big pain. All right. So I'm going to charge this up and, uh, let's have a drink. Okay. Yeah. So it's almost midnight and good YouTubers are supposed to be in bed, but you know, we got to be drinking wine. All right. Let's see here. Oh, what a nice wine opener. And, uh, yeah, some obscure, uh, cheap French wine. Okay. Here we go. Oops. I got, I can't, I can't video it <laughs> and open it at the same time. Much better if I can actually hold the bottle. 
let's try this again. All right, cross your fingers or whatever. And the um, auto stop switch actually worked. And then And there we go. Hey, I can kind of see this, this quirk guide move up and down uh, with it. Anyway, hey. Well, uh, I know what I'm going to be doing. Let's see. How much is enough? Yeah, that should do for a first class. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, like and subscribe, and maybe I'll make another one of these. Although... It might <laughs> be a while, <laughs> at least uh, 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 till I sleep this off. <laughs>